Previously on Higurashi When They Cry console arcs. こんなひどい形で死ぬような人じゃなかったんだ。もともとたくさんの人のために働いて頑張って。いろんな人に認められて幸せになる資格があった。それをおかしな野郎がめちゃめちゃに踏みにじって生き上がって。畜生。畜生
ていうか、夏みじゃないみたい。人が変わったっていうか、何かに乗っ取られたような、そんな異常な感じがする。Akira was about to dismiss her concerns as nonsense, but the serious look, look on Tomiko's face shut him right up. Tomiko was always a realist. She never believed in ghosts or invisible beings. So, for her, of all people, to use the word abnormal demonstrated just how seriously she meant it. So, then, Akira's class, I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to tell you about it. もしかしたらさあの子ひなみざわの出身なのかもしれないだからなんていうかたたりか何かに乗っ取られてっていうのもあながち冗談と笑えないんだよバカバカしい私だってそう思うよでもそうでなくてもさ夏美が自分からひなみざわの悪口言いふらしてるのはそれを私たちから隠すために自分は違うってアピールする意図もあるんじゃないかってねそれ考えすぎだよ千里 As a matter of fact she isn't she's actually right on the money ならあんたはどうなのタマコそうじゃないって言い切れる証拠が何かあるっていうの千里あんた信じられない信じたくないだけどそう考えると夏美のあんな異常行動の理由が全て説明できちゃうんだよもしも君吉がそうなら千里と玉は友達を辞めるのか After sighing heavily, Chisato and Tomiko looked up at Akira. Then after choosing his words, Akira breathed in and spoke quietly. どこで生まれたって君吉夏美は、君吉夏美だ。俺は、君吉を、信じるよ。起きろ。千里も言ってただろう。君吉は事件のショックで、心が不安定になってるって。だったら、俺たちにできることは、君吉が元通りになるまで待って、見守ってやることじゃないか。違うか。アキラちゃん。俺は、君吉が好きだ。今は傷ついて、荒れた振る舞いになってるかもしれないけど、いつか元の君吉に戻ってくれると、俺たちがそれを信じてやらなきゃ、苦しんでる君吉がかわいそうじゃないか。Even though he said encouraging things to Chisato, Akira was also very scared. If something caused her to lose that kindness and innocence, And if they were never to return again, if, what would he do? No, what should he do? Should he wait? Should he move on? Or. Natsumi. He gently muttered that name. He wished to someday call her by that name when he conveyed his feelings to her. That alone brought a memory of Natsumi's smile into his mind, warming his heart. If possible, he'd like to see it all the time. He wanted to get it back, and if he was capable of that. In the evening sky, the voice of the Higurashi could be heard echoing. The vividly colored scenery was beautiful, and Akira kept staring at the clouds. Flowing in the sky as they faded into a deep vermilion hue. And so it continues. Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of the Higurashi and the Cry console arcs. So, um, we seem to now be at that point in the story where, uh, Natsumi's、um, mental instability is starting to become very noticeable to、uh, other people all close to her, ar all around her, and they're growing very concerned. Not unlike how Keiichi's、uh, own mental instability ended up、uh, manifesting and making people around him concerned in the main stories. So, if、uh, what happened in the main story is anything to go by, 
Somebody's going to approach Natsumi at some point and really stick their nose into her business, all in an effort to try to reach, reach out to her and help her out. And Natsumi is most likely going to uh, interpret their efforts to uh, reach out to her in the worst light possible. And from there, things are going to start snowballing out of control very hard, very fast. And there's going to be a whole lot of sadness involved. A lot of sadness and bloodshed and straight up nightmare fuel and then death. Lots and lots of death. So yeah, things are not looking good from my perspective here, but who knows? Maybe we'll, maybe um, whoever's writing this thing will surprise us. I doubt it, but well, I've been proven wrong before on, on a lot of things when it comes to Hirashi's story. But on the other hand, last night, as far as I'm aware, the uh, Ryukushi, the guy who wrote the main story, isn't the one right. hasn't written any of these um, console arcs, say for like maybe So I thought I ended up hearing something, I went to go investigate it, turned out to be nothing, and I kind of lost my train of thought for the most part, on, well, at least on where I was going before um, that interruption happened. So you know what, I think we're, we should just go ahead and get things started. We, we all, I think we all generally know our, our agreements that um, So I uh, heard a noise that I went to go investigate, turned out to be nothing, and now that I'm back here, I've kind of lost my, my train of thought. So I think what I'm just going to go ahead and do now is just get started. We'll just get started and we'll see what exactly is going to really happen from here. A bustling, noisy crowd of people poured out of the entrance, pushing along that flow. Totokun and I finally made it outside. Ah, While shielding them with my hand, I looked up at the sky. It was a fairly sunny day. The deep blue sky was clear, and the summer sun was shining brightly on the ground. It was a little hot. A cooling breeze blew through, mixed with a nasty smell of exhaust but it didn't bother me at all today. Black TG? What does, what does the TG stand for? I skipped lightly and turned toward Totokun, flashing him a grin. He also gave me a kind smile and nodded. でも、意外だった。君よしは、SF とかは好きじゃないかなって思ってたから。そんなことないよ。私、映画なら何でも好き。ロマンスも、電気物も、何でもできれば。ハッピーエンドで終わる話がいい。だったっけ。Token said that with a smile. I grew happy, happy as I recalled when he confessed to me. Right. Today was my first date with Totokun. In the end, Totokun and I decided we should use the tickets she Sao Chen gave us and see the movie together. Thanks to that, 
I had to endure the ridicule, ridicule and frequent teasing from everyone in class for the past week. Until Sunday came along. だからね。今日みたいにいい天気だと風景がいい感じに描けて楽しいんだよな。ああ。いや。そうじゃなくて言いたかったのは特に約束とかはしてなかったってことで。それに俺もその君をしとこうやっていつかはどこかに出かけた
meaning there are times when they go when they go out together as friends without regards for gender. Isn't it natural for them to have a story I don't know about? Yep. Besides, Chisao Chan is my precious best friend. She support she supported Totokun and me from the beginning, and she was the one who brought who bought the tickets for today. So I appreciate what she's done. There's no reason to feel jealousy or animosity. But thinking back on it now, Chisao Chen looked different from usual on, on the day that Totokun confessed to me. Stop thinking about this! She felt a little more mean spirited than usual, like there were thorns in her words. Kimyoshi? What? <laughs> Good idea. Stuff your face with chocolate. Forget all about Chisado for a while. Oh, I like who did you drink that smoothie with? I repeat, stop thinking about this. It's for your own good. And everyone else's. I walked a little ahead of Totokun, trying to un unravel these misunderstandings in my heart. I didn't want him to see my face right now. As soon as we entered the shop, a young waitress greeted us and bowed politely. She guided us to a nice table in front of the window, and we sat down facing each other. Then, after wiping his hands with a ta table towel, Torukun unfolded the menu at his seat and showed it to me. Toto. She was the one who had brought up the chocolate parfaits initially. You... Of course she's got to think chocolate parfaits sound good right now. Come on, man. We just had that... that she just said that only a minute ago. After saying that... I pointed to the entry for Melon Float Parfait on the other page. Chocolate Parfait has been my favorite flavor for a long time, but I didn't want to eat one right now for some reason. <laughs> Torukun called out to a nearby waitress a few years older than us and gave our order. Now, remember, Natsumi. She is just the waitress. She's just only here to do her job. She's not here to swoon, to swoon, to swoon, woo, or otherwise seduce Totokun. She quickly wrote down our order on a slip of paper, then bowed to us with a business smile and head back to the kitchen. Tokun said that while shaking his head, then looked back to the kitchen. But she was already gone. He didn't seem that interested, as he immediately turned his attention to his cold beverage and drank half of it down. Come on, man! At least enjoy it a little! That said, it was all based on her appearance. I didn't have a very nice figure, and a smile didn't look good on me. Unlike me, she was a gorgeously beautiful woman. Well, you gotta pay for tuition somehow, right? きっと似合うと思うよ。ウェイトレス姿。私接客苦手だから。そっか。まあ。<笑> 
俺も人のことは言えないしな。トークンは言えないしな。トーグン e r t a i n l y struggled to behave properly in social situations. But I was sure his homely and sincere personality would be a hit with female customers. And I only noticed this week, but Togun seemed rather popular with the girls in the class. I heard quite a fair number of stories of people whose eyes he'd caught. So there were definitely several people who acted like they were jealous. But were actually glaring at me with hatred. Hatred I wouldn't notice unless I paid close attention. Now, Natsumi, they can just go suck lemon. You got the man that you want that you want to date firmly wrapped around your pinky finger. No need to think too much about it. <sighs> the mean girls can just suck citrus. And I was, I was just about to make a dirty joke involving you and, and Toto Kun. <laughs> but I probably. But I don't know. Should I? Should I have made it? Too late, too late now, I guess. I drank a sip of water, the ice in my glass rolling around with a clink. My dream had come true. But even though I should be satisfied, happy, and enjoying myself, I couldn't understand why I couldn't bring myself to just kick back and revel in it all. I never thought about things like this when I was yearning for him. On field trips or camping trips, we tell each other the names of our crushes, share our feelings, and tease one another about them. That way, We were all at the same time start,、uh, starting line, no matter who we had our eyes set on. And even if our crushes were with someone else, we could cheer each other on and offer support from the bottom of our hearts. But now that my feelings have been requited, can we all stay in the same mindset? That's probably impossible. Primarily because of the way I'm feeling right now. Those plagued by unrequited love envy their crush's significant other and wish misfortune upon them. In turn, said significant other, rather than reveling in their success, becomes paranoid of losing what they have and start eyeing everyone around them with fear and suspicion. It's not like that. The romance that I used to admire so much was not so different from studying in a city I couldn't bring myself to like. With that in mind, I began to wonder if I was really feeling happiness right now. It felt empty. Eventually, the waitress from before came to our table carrying our orders on a tray. A smoothie for Toto Kun and a parfait for me. I put a lot of thought into ordering it, and it was very, very colorful. But to be honest, it didn't really feel like it matched my tastes. <laughs> Toto Kun checked the waitress's face as she left and spoke quietly. He just said he, she was a member of the student council, not to me. Listen! Kyonen no Bunka Sai no Toki, Yosan Toka, Gyosha no Tehai de Osea ni Nata Krasa. Eisto deo, Totemo. Ah, so, Nanda. Though I felt relieved, at the same time, I felt self loathing emanating from the depths of my heart. Something is wrong with me. What am I thinking, Rao? I ought to know by now that Tokun isn't that kind of person. I carried a spoonful of parfait in my mouth to try to shake it out of my mind. And to no surprise, I didn't like it at all. Should have gone to chocolate. So, you know, Kimiochi was in law, Kimita. Yeah. 
実は俺昨日進路面談だったからさ美術は大いに結構ですがもう少し他の科目も頑張りましょうって言われちまった<笑>でも東堂君は陸王大美術の推薦で行くんだよね俺俺君よしに志望校の話したかな I cursed and gasped when Tokun stared at me with wide eyes. I might have hurt his feelings, so I told him the teacher had mentioned it to me. Eh, 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 I knew it. Taro-kun, did you notice? Even though you kept it secret from me, why did you tell Chisato-chan? Because they're childhood friends? They're very familiar with each other? They grew up together? Probably threw all kinds of sh uh, shit at each other just for kicks? And bonded over the cuts and bruises? It hurt. My chest tightened. It was painful. It became boiling hot, as if my heart was on fire. It gradually grew more uncomfortable. I felt jealousy bulging out of my heart. Though I continued to maintain a smile, I struggled to suppress the dark feelings threatening to take my heart over. Calm down, Natsumi. Cool your head and really think about it. Chisao Chen has always been kind to me, hasn't she? When I fainted and woke up in the hospital, she was worried about me, and she cried so much. I'm wrong. I mustn't think badly of Chisao Chen. She and Tomiko Chen are my irreplaceable friends. Those two must treasure me from the bottom of their hearts. Demo! ちゃん東堂君が陸王大に行くって知ってたのかなえあああいつも陸王大に行くんだって、oh, shit. She's not gonna like、this. タマも確か同じだよ<笑> right then something snapped inside my heart what that was The first time I heard any of this. That Chisato chan was going to Rikuo University, and that Tomiko chan was going with her. Then, what about me? I can't go together with them? Rikuo Dai? Ah, so go, get go, rank, takai, yo. Ima kara da to, so to, gambara nai to, ne. 夏美も最近成績上がってきてるけど安全策で攻めた方がいいよここなんてどう Back then when I was prepping for my career meeting both Shisao Chen and Tamako Chen told me that Rikuo University would be too difficult so I should stop pursuing it I listened to their advice I believed them and didn't ask anything more but By then, the two of them already decided that they would go to Rikuo University, didn't they? They knew I alone would be going to a different place, didn't they? Then, why didn't they tell me? Weren't they supposed to be my best friends? No, it wasn't just that. Chisato chan knew. That Tarukun was aiming for Rikyo University, didn't she? Why didn't she tell me? Probably because you never asked? Because she didn't know? Because she didn't know at the time that I liked Tarukun? Yatta ne! Jitsu wa Tamako to Futari de kake shite tan da yo. Natsumi ga Akira ni hore te rin janai ka te. で、私の勝ちいや、ドローかえ玉子ちゃんも知ってたの
当たり前でしょ初めて会った時に私たちが気づかなかったとでも思ってたのたまこと二人でいつ打ち明けてくれるか待ってたんだからねごめんね言い出せなくて。She knew, didn't she? She knew ever since we first met. Thy light, Toto-kun! So why didn't the two of them tell me? Were they laughing at me behind my back? When I graduate from high school, I'll be going to a different school and I'll become separated from Toto-kun. They both knew that, flattered me, cheered me up. All while secretly mocking me? Get away with this. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. They wouldn't! I thought they were my friends. I thought they were my dear friends. They are? Those conniving, sneaky, horrid traitors. Kimyoshi. Oi, Kimyoshi. Eh? When I came back to my senses, I noticed. Tokun was squatting down beside me and looking over at me with a worried expression. My body was cold. I was trembling uncontrollably, and everything in front of me was sharply colored, changing shapes and looking distorted. And yet, sweat was pouring out from my entire body. Several bead like drops rose on my forehead, and multiple lines were rolling down my cheek non stop. What happened to me? Why was I so cold? Why was I in so much pain? Because you got a very nasty bug in your system. The customers in the store began turning to look at the source of the loud noises. I couldn't stand the uncomfortable feeling, so I stood up and began to make my way out of the restaurant. At least, that was the plan, but my feet began to wobble, and I crumbled to the ground. <laughs> After saying that, I started to rise to my feet again, though my legs refused to stand. Why? Why is this happening to me? I felt miserable and embarrassed. Tears started flowing out, and I began to sob. I didn't understand. I felt healthy this morning, and I was in a great mood. Yet suddenly, my body was no longer listening to me, as if it wasn't mine anymore. Why is this happening? Why me? Why today? Even though this is the most important day of my life. Kimiyoshi. Oh, Right then, my body was lifted and softly placed on someone's back. When I opened my eyes, nearly blinded by my tears, I could see the, uh, the sigh of Toro-kun's neck. I quickly tried to get off of Toro-kun's back. However... After those powerful, gentle words, and from the comfort of his large back, I silently nodded up to him. I was on the way. I was on the way home, still riding Toto-kun's back. My house wasn't all that far from the station. But that was when, when 
taking only one person into account. Togun's back was covered in sweat. Even though I was a girl, it still took a considerable amount of energy to walk with a person on your back. Plus, I could, I could feel unreserved looks from pedestrians along the way. I tried telling him that this was embarrassing, that he could put me down already, but... I could tell that Tokun was feeling even more embarrassed. So I guiltily continued to cling to his back. I had already lost track of how many times I'd apologized to him. And every time, Totokun answered in that gentle tone. I had so much to apologize for. Sorry for ruining today's date. Sorry for making you carry me this far. Sorry for making you worry about me. And... Totokun. I'm sorry for keeping a secret from you. And constantly lying to you. <laughs> Tears began to overflow. So many teardrops fell into Tokun's back and neck. But he didn't say anything. He just held me tight so that I wouldn't fall. That made me both happy and sad. I couldn't stop myself from crying. I didn't want to let go. I wanted to stay with gentle Totokun forever. But if I said that one thing to him, or if someone else told him, I wouldn't be able to stay with him. Totokun. I firmly wrapped both my arms around Totokun's shoulders embracing his back. I wanted to stay like this forever. I wanted these happy times to continue forever and ever. That was my only wish. I kept my eyes closed during the rest of the journey home, basking in the warmth of the person I loved. I parted ways with Totoku in front of a corner and returned home. Tokun said that he would carry me all the way home, but I was sure that Mom would be unhappy if she saw me like this and realized I'd been spending time with a boy from school. She might even reprimand Totokun instead of thanking him, so I managed to persuade him to let me go. <sighs> I felt gloomy. It hasn't been much fun going home since that great disaster struck. We weren't hurt by it directly, but everyone in the family has been acting weird since that day. And maybe that includes me. At least on some level you're aware of it. Your own behavior, I mean. I believe that things would go back to normal someday. But there's no sign of that at the moment. Mom had been stuck in the same mood regardless of who was around her, while Grandma has been had been constantly praying in the back room. And Dad just left the two of them alone. Family breakdown. That was a term I heard on TV. However, perhaps it was most apt to describe our current situation. Tadaima. When I opened the door to the house and slowly walked in, Mom was standing by the entrance. <laughs> Am I in trouble? Ta-ta-da-ima. <sighs> Mom just Mom stood there expressionless with her arms folded, just looking down at me without saying a word. Her hair was a mess, and her face was disheveled. Something was clearly off. Mom 
Mom suddenly grabbed me by the arm and marched down the hall, dragging me with her. I quickly shook off my shoes. It was taking all I had just to keep up. I struggled as hard as I could against Mom, but she paid me no heed. And when we entered the living room, she crudely thrust me forward like she was throwing me away. <coughs> I hit my shoulder hard and looked up at Mom with tears in my eyes, shuddering. Mom's face was colored with a rage I'd never seen before. And she was glaring at me. What the fuck did I do? Natsumi, Anata. I cowered. I have been right in the line of fire at her air shattering scream. My, my entire body trembled in fear. My throat parched like it was burning. And my mind was going blank. Oh, crap, she found out about the job. <laughs> when I heard that, I froze. That thing Ogata Sensei had called me to the staff room for when she heard the rumors? I knew it. I knew she'd break her promise. Even after she sincerely told me she wouldn't tell my parents. You told me you were worried about me. As if. All you're worried about is your professional reputation, isn't it? どうなの。夏美。さっさと答えなさい。あなた。親に恥をかかせて悪いとは思わないの。私。言い訳なんて聞きたくないわ。<笑> <あなたは>、<笑> ひびしい家計をなんとかやりくりしてあなたには十分なお小遣いを渡してあげているはずよそれをあなたは陰でこそこそと情けない本当に情けない親の言うことも聞けずに金遣いばかり荒くなって悪い子たちと あなたみたいな親子は私の娘じゃないわそんなに気に入らないのならこの家を出て行きなさいさあ親のありがたみもわからないあんたなんて一人で好き勝手に生きて勝手にどこかで死ね。Jesus fucking Christ woman, calm your tits. <laughs> right then, suddenly. My racing emotions shattered, and shattering heart suddenly became colorless, transparent. The thoughts in my head cleared up. I wasn't angry. I wasn't afraid. Sorrow, suffering, guilt, gratitude, despair. I felt none of them. Everything int intricately mixed together. The vectors in my mind coalesced on one thing. Who? Who asked me to be a part of this family? When did you ask me to become a member of the Kimiyoshi family? Do you seriously believe I would have wanted to be born a Hinamazawan? Tap. I've suffered excruciating hardship since I came to this city, thanks to being born and raised in the countryside. And thanks to that great disaster, I've had to keep secrets I didn't need to bear, and make great efforts to maintain them, to hide my connection to those freaks. There's nothing for it. I was trying so hard, but Hinamazawa ruined everything. The three families, Oishiro-sama, a curse, I could care about any of that. Hinamazawa hasn't given me anything. It gave me that horrible disaster. That's it! If only I wasn't from Hinamazawa, 
I'd be treating everyone normally without having to bear all these inferiority complexes and obligations. I'd be playing with my friends like normal, struggling to improve my grades like normal, and finding a person to fall in love with like normal. It's all Hinamazawa's fault. My happiness, efforts, and dreams have all gone up in smoke because I grew up in that wretched place! I finally, finally, I made it to my room. How many hours has it been? Just how long did mom and dad scold me after dad came home? In the end, they were both just mad I got in a part-time job without their permission, and ne neither one bothered hearing my reasons. They didn't care why. I guess they just wanted a distraction and to get mad about something. And I didn't feel like talking about it anymore. The way things stood now, I wasn't soft enough to consider spending my hard-earned money on my parents anymore. What's more, I could hear Grandma's annoying shrill voice as she chanted her irritating prayers while my parents scolded me. Muttering that to myself, I closed my eyes and tried to sleep. It'll be dinner time in a little while. I'm sure they'll, they'll come wake me up. Or maybe they won't bother to wake me and have dinner without me. But I'd be fine with that. Huh? There were fun times. Happy times. But beyond that, there were aggravating times. That's why I should forget everything and go to sleep. Tomorrow, I can meet a Kirakun at school, and we can share fun stories about yesterday. If that can reduce these depressing feelings, that'll be enough. I was getting close to du it was getting close to dusk. Scarlet sunlight began pouring in through the windows, dyeing the room red. From somewhere far away, I finally heard the voice of the Higurashi. For me, they were a decent substitute for a lullaby. Slowly, I slowly lost consciousness leaving my body behind it to enter a world of sleep. Like... I'm no like I'm no expert on familial re relations in Japan. I'm not an expert on a, a lot of things when it comes to Japan, but I do know enough to know that um, when you're a minor, you've got to uh, you when you're a minor, you got to take extra precautions to make sure that you don't bring anything that would be do anything. Excuse me that could be perceived as bringing shame to your family. Like doing things without your parents' permission, for example, even if it's like just getting yourself a part-time job during uh, when you're in school or something like that. I know enough about Japanese culture to know that gen that sort of thing is generally frowned upon in, in their society in general, by their school, by not just with um, the, their school systems and stuff like that. So, yeah, so on, a, so on an intellectual level, I can understand why her mom was upset with her, but I mean, the sheer raw fury behind, uh, behind uh, her outburst, it's just like, on one hand, 
I know she's. I know the. I know the lady is under a lot of stress because of how Grandma has been uh, reacting to the disaster and everything. But on the other hand, like that was still. That still felt excessive. Excessive, the way she rea she reacted to Natsumi right there. What it felt way too harsh, you know. So like, yeah. I don't know. Maybe this is just a maybe this is just a a result of my uh, own values on account of my own foreign upbringing. But still, it just. Calm your tits, woman. Like I said earlier. Like, I know this is... I know I'm not too intimately familiar with Japanese customs on these sort of things, but... That just felt too harsh. I headed down the stairs and looked into the dimly lit living room. Mom and Dad were there, gazing at the TV screen. <sighs> Mom was holding an unpeeled apple, not looking my way. And Dad was watching the TV with a crestfallen look on face. His face? Either he didn't notice me either, or he was just ignoring me. The evening news was on. A female reporter on the screen pointed to the country road behind her while continuing her explanation in a slightly agitated tone. Yes, I'm 本日正午過ぎ岐阜県山中の県道で女性の遺体が発見されました年齢は70歳から90歳で身長は150センチ前後警察の発表では殺害された後に遺棄されたとの見解で被害者の身元を現在確認中。Right then, the television shut off. After that, the room fell silent and filled with a he heavy atmosphere. I felt bewildered as I tried to collect my thoughts on the story from the news. Grandma's corpse had finally been found. That's your grandma? But... Why? I never thought they would find it so quickly. What ha What the hell happened? Did she, com did she commit suicide or something? How many days had it been? I'd already forgotten. It felt like it was only yesterday. Yet it also felt like it was ages ago. That day, as I came home from school and opened the front door, a foul odor caught me off guard. I almost choked after unintentionally inhaling it, then grimaced as I began examining the inside of the house. <laughs> I suspiciously head toward the source's smell. Then I heard a noise from the bathroom that sounded like shaving ice. Wondering that's what shaving ice sounds like? That sound effect I just heard. Wondering what was happening in there, I opened the glass door and took a look inside. I gasped, stepped back, and stumbled and collapsed to the floor. There, I saw Mom straddling over Grandma's body like she was riding a horse, raising a kitchen knife overhead, repeatedly thrusting to Grandma's stomach, blood splattering all over her as she did. Jesus fucking Christ, she murdered her! Natsumi. Was that what she meant? In the last episode, about taking care, of, uh, taking care of the problem in a more direct fashion, like holy fucking hell, woman! <laughs> she was glaring at me. Mom turned her blood-soaked face toward me and stared at me with an ominous light in her eyes. Not a single trace of sanity remained there. Well, she's clearly, um, under the effects of the bug big time right now. That much is plainly obvious. Do, do 
Mom cocked her head in confusion as she looked at me and laughed. Why'd she kill her? The reason turned out to be rather trivial. Grandma's ritualistic praying since this morning had been getting on Mom's nerves. So she yelled at her to stop it, but Grandma said some harsh things in response. They must have gotten carried away, and it came to this. Here's my question to you. Which is better, to be stared at as a freak or stared at as a murderer? Just think about that for a good solid minute. Please. Mom had clearly come up with an excuse in hindsight, but I saw right through her from the very beginning. She hadn't sympathized with Grandma from the start, which snowballed into murderous intent when tempers grew too high, and she killed her with that knife. That must be how it happened. Still, there was no turning back. Not if I wanted to protect the life I'd built until now. If someone found out, Mom would also be taken away from this house. At that- at this point, I would argue that'd be for your own good. So once Dad came home that night, we convinced him to hide Grandma's body in the mountains. And of course, you're just a willing accomplice in all this thing. Huh, Daddy-o? Still showing no spine whatsoever in the face of your family's growing insanity? Not putting your foot down like you should be? Driving through the dark mountains with Dad, we search for a secluded, unfamiliar place. Thinking about it now, I guess if this all occurred right before um, that earlier scene with Natsumi uh, coming back home and uh, getting confronted by Mommy Dearest about uh, her part-time job, then yeah, she definitely, Mommy technically has been under a lot of stress. After all, she's she's probably worried worried sick over getting uh, over having her murder discovered. I'm also thinking about the timing of the incident, too. I think this... Didn't this incident actually end up occurring around the time that uh, Natsumi's friends started to know something was seriously off with, uh, with uh, Natsumi? Yeah, if that's the case, then... Of course she'd be acting very visibly off here after, you know, witnessing your grandma being murdered by dear mommy and being and essentially being made into a willing accomplice. Yeah, I probably have a very hard time acting normal too after that. Holy shit. Well, I knew, I mean, I knew this things were going to start snowballing until eventually blood got, would start being shed, but I guess I should have maybe seen this coming in hindsight, her mom going off the deep end like this. But it is what it is, I guess. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. After receiving those intimidating instructions from mom... I continued walking with flashlight in hand, desperately thinking of a hiding place that would never be found. And, while thinking scary thoughts, while feeling uneasy, while being crushed by guilt, my whole family buried Grandma's body in the ground. And yet, for all that, we went to hide her in spite of the fear and sorrow we felt at the time. 
But was it all in vain? Wait a minute. How far back can I go look back here? I'm trying to remember that earlier scene. Wasn't Grandma's chanting mentioned? Okay, yeah, I did. Okay, so around this time she was alive, I guess? So I guess this murder occurred after that scene? I'm sorry, I'm doing my best to try to keep track of ev when everything's happening here. Try not to get- I'm trying not to kill the pace too much. We went to hide in her in spite of the fear and sorrow we felt at the same time. At the time. But was it all in vain? Sonna. Filled with despair, I collapsed on the spot. Dad kept his head lowered. Mom set down the remote control, then slowly turned her eyes away from the TV and back to me. You better not be in insinuating that this is somehow my fault. Maybe I should be asking you that, since it's your corpse that you created. Bang. Mom slammed a table, rising to her feet. The ashtray re resting there was launched to the floor. みんなで捨てに行ったじゃない。忘れたとは言わせないわよ。お母さん。だけど家族の中に裏切り者がいた。そういうことじゃないの？違うの？わざと道端からでもわかるように。I took a breath and froze. I realized that she was implicating me as the traitor. Mom grabbed the fallen ashtray and smacked me with it. The ashes covered my face, and I suddenly started coughing. It's... it's... not me. I don't know anything. I can't answer. There's no way I can answer. DO SOMETHING! YOU SPINELESS PIECE OF SHIT! Seeking help, I looked to Dad. However, Dad kept his head hung, avoiding eye contact with everyone. ねえ、お父さん。私ちゃんとやったでしょ。そうだよね。ねえ。やめなさい。また甘えた声でお父さん、お父さんって。人に頼れば that smile was cold and intimidating. Threatening was the word that best matched its appearance. <laughs> Dad nodded powerlessly. When I saw that, I felt abandoned and wanted to cry. 
I can't believe it. Dad, why are you doing this? Why are you lying? I haven't done anything. It wasn't me who put Grandma in a place that was easy to find. The one who did that was you, Dad, wasn't it? <laughs> Natsumi, get the fuck out of there! Run! Go hide under a bridge! Go to Chisato! Just get anywhere but get away from get to anywhere but here! Stay away from these people! <laughs> In shock, I opened my eyes. What are you talking about, Mom? Where did this come from? だから、夏美、あれは全部夏美が一人でやったことなの。そうよね。そうだったじゃない。だから悪いのはあなた人。どうして嘘嘘だよ。だって私が学校から帰ったら。you trying to gaslight her now, too? On top of everything else? That's... It wasn't me. I didn't do it. Mom is the one who did it, right? Right? Why is she saying it was me? Mom looked at me, wearing a cold smile on her face. It was the same ice cold smile she threatened Dad with earlier. I. I don't understand. What is Mom saying? What's she trying to do? I don't get any of it. もしも家族に類が及ぶようなことになったら、その時は夏美、あなたが家族全員の代表として警察に出頭するの。Fuck you! I'll freaking tell. I'll, I would freaking tell the police everything that you and Dad did and bring you all down with me. あなた一人で家族を裏切った罰として家族のために。with a family like this, who needs enemies? I stared straight into Mom's eyes. But I couldn't sense anything. It was as if there was no life inside them. And no matter how tearfully I pleaded to her, Mom just looked at me with an eerie expression loosely resembling a smile. I looked pleadingly at Mom and Dad. However, Mom still had the same smile, and Dad remained silent like usual. <laughs> Tears continued flowing down my face. Why? Why is this happening? Tell me! They're supposed to be my irreplaceable family. My kind mom. My gentle dad. I loved them. So why are they doing this? Natsumi? <laughs> mom suddenly grabbed my wrist and held it tight. And with her other hand, she turned me around so violently that I thought my jaw would dislocate. Then she saw a strong, piercing gaze straight into my eyes. Baka 
幸せに暮らしていたのにおばあちゃんが死んであなたも内心は喜んでいたじゃないの私に感謝したでしょそれをどうしてあなたはぶち壊しにするのなんてなんてバカな親不孝者なの Why do you have so low regard for your daughter? Mom violently tossed me and I hit the wall hard. For a moment, the pain left me unable to breathe. Then she slowly walked toward me, looking down on me with a ferocious expression on her face. Aruko, Oi! Anata wa jama s h n a i de c h o d a i Mom glared demonically at Dad. It seemed like Dad was trying to step in, but he lost his nerve after that. And withdrew his raised hand. Coward! Mom staunchly kicked me in the stomach. A dull pain ran through my abdomen, leaving me no choice but to curl up while holding my stomach. I started to feel nauseous, but I was unable to hold it back. Mom delivered another kick to my abdomen. Mom kicked me in the abdomen yet again. This is insane. A punishment would be forcing me to wear wet clothes. This is just an excuse for assault. Plain and simple. This isn't mom. This isn't something mom would do. This nightmarish reality was making me sick. My consciousness was gradually fading away. Even the screams were getting quieter. Help! Someone! I don't care who! Help me! Help! I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything wrong. So why? Why is this only happening to me? Someone! Someone please help me! At that moment, Mom suddenly stopped moving. Yamenasai, <gasps> Haruko! Finally found your spine, huh, buddy? It was Dad, grabbing Mom's hand to stop her. And then. <laughs> Dad's voice silenced the living room. Mom turned around and panted as she waited for Dad to continue. Natsumi is the one who's really suffering here. And leave me with this crazy bitch! Mom violently shook away the hand that was holding her, then clenched her fist and trembled with anger. However, Dad stood firm and showed no fear. He calmly continued in a resolute tone. Dad took me to his arms to cheer me up. He lifted me up to support me, 
and tears again began to fall from my eyes. Living happily with all my family. It was such a difficult thing. I didn't want anything special. I just wanted to keep enjoying every, every day. So why had things come to this? Natsumi. Dad knelt down and hugged me tightly. お父さんもずっと考えていたんだよ。どうしたらいいか。元通りに家族揃って幸せに暮らすにはどうしたらいいのか。ずっと考えていたんだ。Hate to break it to you, buddy, but you can't. でもお父さんはどんどん悪くなる現実を前にしながら何も勇気がなかったんだ。Dad stopped speaking there and lowered his head apologetically. Better late than never, I suppose. Dad was suffering from guilt all this time, believing he should care about his family more than anyone, but being unable to do anything for us. Dad always blamed himself for being cowardly. Now that I knew how he felt, I felt a little sorry for him. おばあちゃんの遺体を分かりやすい場所に置いたのはお父さんが家族を守る番なんだ。自分の背中を押してもらうために、わざと見つかる場所に置いたんだよ。あなた大丈夫だよ、夏美。これからはもう大丈夫。
Dad smiled gently. The look in his eyes seemingly conveying to me he understood everything. I felt the warmth of his strong will and thought that I could rely on his courage. After saying that, Dad slowly nodded. Hey, Dad. Can I really believe in you? Can I truly, honestly count on you? You damn fool, there's no way that's ever gonna happen. I understand where you're I understand where you're coming from, but it's just not gonna happen. Oh shit. Before Dad could finish. Blood splattered into the air. A splash of red hit my eyes. <laughs> A bright red filter covered my line of sight. And right when globs of liquid began gushing from Dad's mouth before my very eyes, I spotted the tip of a knife sticking through his throat. Get the hell out of there! Now! Jump through the window! I gawked in horror at the bizarre presence behind Dad. Mom was right there, holding a kitchen knife dripping with blood. She stood arrogantly, looking down at Dad, who had been moving, talking, and breathing just a moment ago. I couldn't speak. It all happened so suddenly that I couldn't cry, speak, or even breathe. Dad. No way. Is he dead? I looked at Dad as he suddenly fell down in front of me. I couldn't stop trembling. My heart was screaming at me to get out of this place. But my legs wouldn't budge as though they were no longer my own. Even so, I tried to move my hands using all my strength. But then I heard a sniffling sound overhead and fearfully looked up. Mom's voice trembled with tears. Mom spoke in a rough voice, seeming to push all her anger onto the people in front of her. Her long and beautiful hair swayed to and fro, and her face was warped with a demonic expression. Mom grabbed a hold of my hair, the hair that Grandma used to tie every day. My lovely hair. That hair was being clamped down by Mom, roughly handled like it was about to be torn out. Mom tossed me away after screaming that. Some of the hair she was clutching tore out, and several strands fell to the floor in a bunch. <laughs> Enduring the pain in my head and shoulder, I grimaced and raised my head, then froze up. 
Mom was right there, holding the kitchen knife and laughing maniacally. お父さん人に褒められたの綺麗な髪だって肌が白くて羨ましいってご近所の人が新しいワンピースを着れば綺麗な服だと褒めてくれ髪おしゃれの話に花が咲いて毎日が楽しくてこんな素敵な場所で家
This isn't my mom. <laughs> Overwhelmed with sorrow, tears began welling up. I wasn't entirely sure what was so sad. However, every time I thought about the things I cherished being gone forever, tears dribbled down from both of my eyes non-stop, leaving a number of stains on the floor. What I cherished most was my gentle, irreplaceable family. So kind, so warm. My family always acted like a single, unified heart when we were together. That's how it should have been. Natsumi, what are you doing? After I came to my senses and turned back to her, Mom looked at me with a serious expression. You are Mom, what are you saying? I don't know what you mean. Why am I your enemy? I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything, so why? I broke off running with that scream. I quickly escaped to Grandma's room. Natsumi, don't worry. Natsumi. Mom called my name in a sweet and gentle voice, slowly walking with the kitchen knife. No. Don't come any closer, Mom. Mom crossed the doorway into Grandma's room. From far away, I heard the ear grating ringing of the telephone. Natsumi wa. Watashi ga kirai nan da yo ne. Obachan wo koroshita atashi wo nikunderu nda yo ne. Oh, so now, so now it's you who killed Grandma. Could you at least keep your facts straight for all our sakes, please? Surely, what's left of your con of your what's left of that that brain of yours can function and do at least that much, right? Mom had the kitchen knife in hand, but I couldn't look at her in the face. My eyes were overflowing with tears, but I tried to hold them in with my hand. Just then, a leaf fell on that hand. I looked up and noticed that the sakaki trees decorating the shrine were falling apart. Almost like a sign that Orishira-sama had given up on protecting us without Grandma's desperate prayers to him. While Mom was deliriously muttering those things, I was frantically thinking. I frantically thought to myself while staring at the ringing telephone. What did I do wrong? How, how did it come to this? What sin did I commit? When? What? Why? How come? Did I anger Orishira-sama by moving here? Was this my punishment for hating it when Grandma forced me to pray to Orishira-sama? Or was it because I didn't believe in Orishira-sama? I apologized. If I did something wrong, then I'm sorry. 
I had no idea what I'm do what wrongdoing I'd committed or what I'd done. But if an apology could end all of this, I'd apologize as many times as needed. Mom, forgive me. So stop this already. Mom. Mom! I knelt down and rubbed my head along the floor. Please forgive me already. Mom. 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 The sound of telephone ringing drowned out my apologies. Natsumi? Mo When I raised my head, Mom had returned to her usual gentle smile. Mom raised the kitchen knife. Then she began to swing it down toward my head. The knife covered in Dad's blood that even had bits of meat sticking from it was now seeking my blood. In desperation, I used the last of my strength to dodge it. I threw myself into a narrow opening and rushed out. Then, unable to catch my breath, I raced to the phone by the front door. It was still ringing. When I grabbed the receiver, I cried out without listening to, for the other person's voice. Then I hung up the receiver and dashed down the hallway at full speed. I almost tripped on my feet, but this was no time to fall. With a bit of a stagger, I continued running, turned around the corner, pretended to go up the stairs, then dove into the next room and locked the door behind me. I hoped Mom would think I ran upstairs towards the veranda and escaped outside. I desperately hold my breath while holding down the locked doorknob. So that mom wouldn't find me. Please, don't. Thump, thump. I could hear the sound of my heartbeat, surprisingly loud. So loud I began to wonder if mom could also hear it. Someone, help. Please, God, anyone, help me. Kimyoshi! Oh, thank God! I heard a familiar voice. A loving, gentle voice that brought back memories. My mom's gone murderous! Why was Totokun here? How was I hearing his voice? No, don't tell me he came over to my house. Kimyoshi! Oi, Kimyoshi! A voice shuddering with fear and tension desperately called out my name. No doubt about it. I didn't understand why, but Tokun had come to my house. Beware the crazy knife wielder! Dad was dead, and Mom was chasing me around the house with a, ki with a kitchen knife. I hastily unlocked the door and opened it up. Slam. I heard a dull sound, at almost the exact same time. <laughs> Totokun was lying on the ground, with Mom looking down at him. Oh fucking hell, not you too! She held the base of a broken urn in her hand, and Totokun was collapsed on the floor with blood dripping down his head. <laughs> Totokun! Ah, <laughs> Natsumi! With a smirk, Mom looked at me. The moment I saw that, the restraints within me came unleashed, and my heart and mind suddenly went quiet. At this rate, I'm not the only one who will die here. Torukun and I will be killed here together. No way. That's unacceptable. In that case, I...
my Iraq breathing began to stabilize. I no longer looked at my mom with fear. My heart was filled with emotions that transcended that. She even got Tarokun mixed up in this. He didn't know a thing and wasn't involved. Yeah, she did this to him. She'd pay! She'd pay for putting the boy I loved through this! You'll pay for this, Mom! <laughs> Mom reached for the kitchen knife sitting on the desk. Noticing that, I immediately lunged toward it. I won't let Mom grab that knife! I reached for the kitchen knife, too. But Mom snatched it a moment sooner and raced it overhead. <laughs> The tip of the knife grazed my cheek. Still, I, I continued resisting, desperately clinging to Mom's arms. I remained firm, no matter how much she jeered and yelled at me. Then. I reached out for the hilt of the knife and grabbed Mom's hand, gripping it tight. Her hands were bloody and slippery. That didn't matter. I firmly grasped Mom's bony fingers with both my hands, digging my nails into her. No. No matter what happens, I won't let Mom take that knife. Enough is enough. Let's end this right here. Our hands were tied together, scrambling hard to get a hold of the knife. The cutting edge was moving radically, pointing back and forth between Mom and myself many times. The blade was unstable as it reflected lights back at me. Natsumi! next moment. I mustered all my strength and tried to snatch the knife from Mom with one go. But for a moment, I lost the balance of power and the knife left my hand. In that gap, Mom began to swing the knife upward. Shaken off, I lost my balance and fell hard on my backside. And then, Mom swung her arm up too hard, and the blade of the knife cut into her neck. Blood started bursting out like a fountain from Mom's neck. <laughs> I felt like I could hear Mom screaming, but the sound didn't reach my ears. Her face warped with agony as her mouth opened like she was screaming something. Then she collapsed to the floor. Come <laughs> Even though I shouldn't be hearing anything, I heard a voice that sounded very similar to my own. No, that's wrong. This is my voice. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore. Hey. Somebody tell me. Where did things start spiraling out of control? Where did I... Where did we go wrong? Hey. Please tell me. Someone tell me. Please. Sorry. 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 Right there, as if the power had been cut, my consciousness was swallowed by darkness.
Jesus Christ. I knew things were going to get bad, but holy shit. Now, if this turns now, if what I'm seeing right here turns out to be her waking up from a bad dream, then well, good for her. I get good for her. I mean, at least she didn't have to be a part of all everything that we just saw for the past hour or so. But somehow, I don't think she. I don't think that's what we're looking at here. I think they're all dead. Every single one. Mama, Daddy, and Grandma. All six feet under. And now I'm basically an orphan. I fear for Natsumi's sanity. What's left of it at this point? Not gonna lie. I think I'm going to go ahead and end things here, because, well, I don't know. This feels like a good enough spot to stop as any, and frankly, we've been through a lot today. And I, for one, need something to, need to do something to cheer me up after witnessing all this. I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of the Hirashi When They Cry console arcs. If you did, and you want to see more content from me, Feel free to subscribe to my channel. I will see you all next time. Take care.